This is the first reintroduction of a native mammal back into the English landscape. This is a species that we haven't had in this landscape for four or five hundred years. The engineering that they're doing is benefiting a whole range of other species. We've forgotten just how significant this animal is in terms of breathing life, you know, real energy back into these watercourses. The River Otter beaver trial started in 2015 and it actually came about as a result of beavers living wild on the river already. We're not quite sure where they came from, um, but they'd escaped or been released deliberately into the, into the watercourse. And back in 2014, they were shown to be breeding and the government were planning to round them up and remove them. And we proposed a trial to try and see what the impacts of beavers would be in a real world agricultural landscape. The trial came to a conclusion in, in 2020 and at that point, the government made the decision, based on the evidence that we presented, that the, the beavers could remain in the wild. One of the concerns at the beginning of the project was that the beavers could be quite inbred. You know, we had a very small founder population here, and the license allowed us to introduce an additional five animals into the catchment so that we could bring some new genetic material in. And they've thrived, they've done really well, they're actively breeding here, they've moved into the watercourse and have been manipulating the river in all sorts of ways. It's been a really interesting sight to watch. I think one of the reasons why the landowners have generally been so accepting of the beavers is the time that we've allocated to that side of it. You know, we've now got a dedicated field officer who's out working with people that have got beavers turning up on their land answering any questions, explaining what the beavers are doing and helping to alleviate any problems. My first thing to do is to make sure that landowners, farmers, property owners are educated about what beavers do and don't do. And sometimes that's some myth busting, so we don't need to worry about them eating fish. Um, but it is the reality on the ground that beavers can build dams in frustrating places and that I can demonstrate how they can get around that. And from Devon Wildlife Trust's point of view, uh, an organisation that is focused on conservation and bringing old species back is really exciting but we've got to be pragmatic we've got to understand that this landscape is dominated by humans use of it and that sometimes we're going to have to shoehorn beavers back into areas beavers are a keystone species basically what that means is that they're bringing dynamism back into the watercourse and the engineering that they're doing is benefiting a whole range of other species. For example, on these headwater streams, what they're doing is they're building dams. Sometimes the dams aren't permanent features, they come and go, but in doing so, they're bringing that dynamism back into the watercourse that's been lost. You know, so many of our streams have been dredged and straightened and deepened. And what beavers do is they raise the bed levels, they recreate meanders, and those meanders are then used by kingfishers and the fish are coming back into the pools that they're creating. We've got spawning gravels for trout in the, in the riffles that are being created as the dams wash out. We've tamed our, our rivers and streams and beavers are really helping to restore some of, the, some of the species that we've lost. Most of the dams are really built up in the headwaters. So they're built up in the, in the smaller streams and the ditches, probably above where most of the salmon are migrating probably in the areas where sea trout are coming up into. So in low flows, you would see that some of these dams may well prevent sea trout getting up into the, the higher reaches. But once the flows start to come down in the autumn, the fish are often able to migrate over the top of the dam. So we see them actually jumping some of these dams, but also the dams get washed out. You know, they're not permanent features. They get washed out in the autumn rains. That allows the fish to then get past them up into the sort of the very smaller streams. And in doing so, they're providing the spawning habitats. As these dams wash out, you get these new gravel beds forming, and that's exactly where the trout are spawning. 
you know, it's a really complicated relationship, the one between beavers and fish, and beavers have been living alongside these fish species for thousands and thousands of years, quite happily. And as long as these watercourses are provided with space, you know, we're giving the, the river the space to breathe and the, and the space to be manipulated by the beavers, I do think that the, the beavers are gonna benefit these fish populations that are in real trouble in some parts. There's a huge enthusiasm for beavers and the communities certainly here in the River Otter have really welcomed them and adapted really well to having them and have benefited from them. And I think the government are recognising that and they're seeing the benefits that the beavers are providing and I do think that the decisions are going to be made that will allow this species to return to all of our rivers over time.